Hi everyone, it's me, Tim, and today I want to talk about how I structure code. And this was a question from a lot of different people, including Greenya84, who asked that I do it using an example of inventory, which I think is a good question or good uh, specification because inventory contains a number of interesting things about code structure and it's common to a lot of RPGs. So I'll talk about that. Now, one thing that I really, really want to stress before I even talk is no matter what I'm doing, I like to keep system mechanics separate from UI. So I'm going to explain how I do that in the context of inventory. And I'm going to start with mechanics and then talk about how this thing becomes a component on different things and then how it's used by UI, that, that component. So let's start with the basic mechanics of inventory. Remember, because it's divorced from UI, inventory should have no idea how it's being displays, displayed on the screen. It doesn't care. And you should not make it care. You will only make your code too complicated if you make it care. So inventory itself should have a list of items. Don't know how you don't care how you want to store it. It could be a linked list, could be a doubly linked list, could be an array, could be a sizable array. I don't care. So it has this list of items. Here's the functionality that I think you need to include. You want add item and remove item, and that adds one into, onto, into that list and removes one, removes it from the list. They always work. So they're void returning. You just pass it an item and it either adds it in, or if you give it an item on remove, it finds it on the list and takes it out. They don't return any failure codes. Why? Because there are associated functions, can add and can remove, that you should also write that if you call can add and it returns true, boom, you can add it. It doesn't add it, but you can. If you call can remove and it returns true, you can remove it. Doesn't matter, you know, it, it just finds it on the list and, and determines the condition under which it's removable. Now, both can add and can remove have failure codes. So if they return false, they also return a failure code. And those, like can add could be, you don't have a spot for it. Um, it's too heavy. Um, all the things that have to do with just putting it on that list that are part of the mechanics, not that there's, you know, if you have a grid of things that you're not putting it on the grid correctly. I'll get to that can remove can return failure codes like this item you know is a maybe it's a quest item quest items can't be removed maybe it's cursed cursed items can't be removed whatever those are all the mechanics that you have then you have two more inventory methods equip and unequip to a slot so i want inventory to know about equipment slots and those like add and remove equip and unequip items from a particular slot and they do not fail. So they have the equivalent can equip, can unequip because, you know, maybe it's a cursed item and once you wear it, you can't unwear it. Maybe it's um, a class specific item. So you're not allowed to equip it based on your class. These are things that the inventory should know about because these are system mechanics. You want to keep mechanics as clean as possible. This is why you keep all the UI stuff out of it. Now, there may be data that are stored in items, like individual items may contain UI related data that they neither use nor, under, nor understand. For example, if you make a grid inventory, you may store the grid location in the item. So every item knows what its grid location is. This is only used by UI. And the mechanics here neither access that data nor have any idea what that data is. But I'm just saying the items still can have that data on them, like they have, you know, weight or flags for whether they're cursed or class specific. Great. But this me the mechanics won't use it. And then before I finish, the final things that inventory mechanics may have are what I call the utility functions that don't have anything to do with adding, removing, equipping, unequipping. Things like give me the total weight of all the items I have equipped or give me the total weight of all the items I'm carrying 
or give me the total value of all the items I'm carrying. You might even want to write ones like give me the total value of all the items of this type, you know, weapons, armor. You can do whatever you want, and this is where it should be done. Now, now that you have that, that is your inventory component. It is a thing you can add to objects that let it have an inventory because you may want to add it to containers and then you can have a bunch of different kinds of containers. And the reason you did that as its own component is whether the container is lockable or not is part of the container. It's not part of the inventory. So if you want to make shelves or a chest, those are all containers. Shelves aren't lockable. Chests are. If they have a key associated with them, the container knows about the key. You don't have to put that in the inventory mechanics. There's simply a component on container saying, and here's how I have, you know, here's how things are put put in me. Similarly, creatures can have the inventory component and that can be put on things like containers that you can loot, um, people you can pickpocket, vendors you can buy and sell from, and, and the vendors may use a different inventory component for what they sell versus what they're carrying. Um, this is why sometimes when you play games, you find a secret hidden chest that contains the shopkeeper's sellable inventory. Um, what I like about doing it this way too is you, when the object gets that component, it can call a function saying, I don't have like equipable slots. So now the inventory system knows, okay, if anybody calls can equip item to like helmet slot or armor slot, I just on can at, on can equip, I always return false, no such slot. And that way when a container gets an inventory component and initializes it, usually by saying, here's how well, here's the total weight of items I can carry or the total number of items I can carry, it will also tell it whether or not to turn those slots on. So I still want the inventory system to handle all that, but this is how the object it's on can tell it, oh, and here's how I want you to handle some of the inventory functions. So finally, now we get to UI. And here, the main reason I keep these separate is it's besides super clean code is very, very frequently the inventory mechanics are going to be coded by a different programmer who's doing the inventory UI, especially on big games where you have specialists, a user interface specialist may not write any of the code for the system he's creating the user interface for. This is true for inventory, character creation, character maintenance, level up, whatever the UI person is writing, he probably didn't write the mechanics system. He just wants a very clean API into that system. So now what do we do in the user interface for inventory? So it knows the mechanics, so it knows it can call add, but add knows nothing about the UI. So it's the UI that has to pay attention to other can add conditions. For example, the player wants to drop an object in their inventory. If it's a grid, maybe they have to drop it on a slot that's already empty. That's something the UI would handle. And if the, the player tries to drop it on something, the UI decides whether or not it's supposed to say, no, you can't drop that, or if it drops it and picks up the object that's there, or if it drops it and displaces the object that's there one over, that's all UI's decision. Ultimately, what would happen once they determined that it can be dropped in for no reason the UI um, can determine, then it calls can add for the inventory system. And if that says it can be added, then they add it and put it into that slot. So this means the UI handles all the UI related stuff. So once it's in the grid, if you have like auto sorting, like you can press a button and, you know, put all the objects in, of a particular, show the objects in a particular type. And if you want it sorted, not just being displayed, but you actually want them arranged that way, the UI would handle that. And it can call that function in the items that says, hey, I need to store some um, data for you, like a grid location, and the item will get that information. But remember, mechanics knows nothing about that, doesn't care about that uh, field on the item, will never use it. What I love about this is, this means the UI knows about the mechanics, but mechanics don't know about UI. So this brings up one issue that every programmer will then wonder about when they have to start implementing this is 
how can the UI handle things about the things that happen in the encumbrance? For example, um, if you go to add an item, it would encumber the player. It's easy in the inventory UI when it calls can add and it says yes, and you could also call total weight and do all the comparison and all that. You could do it that way, but you're gonna have to do that. You have to remember, you have to do that every time anywhere in the system calls an add. If it's a script, if it is a um, uh, another part of the system besides a the inventory UI, for example, let's say you have um, a button the player can press that just picks up everything that's off the ground. So it doesn't bring up any UI. It just goes, if there's any objects on the ground around here, just add them into my inventory. All those places that call add will also have to call to see if the encumbrance has been exceeded. A better way I like to handle this is with events, where whenever the mechanic system, I mean, it knows you're adding something, it can look at the total weight. It can call the encumbrance because these are all mechanics level things. It can say, oh, you picked something up and it exceeded your encumbrance. I'm going to throw an event, Encumbr you know, encumbrance limit exceeded on player. Then anybody who wants to listen to that event can listen for it and handle it if they want. Maybe there's a message line at the bottom of your UI that just goes, you're now encumbered. Maybe if you have the in an inventory UI open, as soon as you pick up that item, maybe you want to display that it's going to encumber you if you if you add it. What's great about this is the encumbrance system <clears throat> or the mechanic system doesn't have to know all the places in the UI that may care about the player getting encumbered. It just goes, hey, this event, this this item was added in, and the player's encumbered. Doomp, throw the event. Inventory UI can listen to it. The main HUD can listen for it, and they can handle the event. And then the event can be one of those things where if the inventory UI has already handled it, then it can eat the event so it doesn't go up to the HUD and the HUD handles it. So you, you see the message come up twice. What That's what I love about events is you can decide who sees it in what order and how it gets handled. And you don't clutter up the mechanics layer having to know about UI and Who's going to display this error message? It doesn't care. It returns reasons you can or cannot add or drop or equip or unequip an item. It throws events for things like exceeding a weight limit, and it doesn't care. It's it's done its job. That keeps the mechanics super clean and also very much in line probably with what your designer will write in the docs. It keeps the UIs very clean because... Let's say you're playing the game and a bug comes up and says, hey, I picked up objects that were too heavy and I didn't see a message about it. You can go, oh, the inventory listens for that message, but the HUD doesn't. I'm going to add the HUD as a listener for that event as well. And if the inventory doesn't handle it, the HUD will. And that handles this weird case where you get in a dialogue with someone and they give you an item and it encumbers you. And because it wasn't, you know... It didn't happen in the inventory system. The player didn't know. Nope, they know. As soon as that item gets added in and the ad triggers that encumbrance event, something sees it and goes, ah, oh, I need to tell the player they're encumbered now. So that is how I generally structure my code. And I hope that makes sense. And I hope Green Yacht 84 specifically, that answered your question.